All right, we're going to take a short look at microphone dynamic range. Um, on first ins inspection, that basically what we're dealing with is two different levels. The first level is basically the lowest level, and the second level is basically the highest level. Um, the lower level seems to be equated to something called the self-noise or equivalent input level, and the second level seems to be the maximum SPL the microphone can accept without doing some type of distortion. Now, it doesn't seem to be exactly that simple without just being able to look at whatever figures they put on the microphone because we end up with something like 20 dBA SPL or 32 dB SPL 468 weighted, um, which means that that's a little bit more involved than just a bottom level. And when we're dealing with an upper level, we might end up with something like 142 dB SPL peak with 0.5% TDH. So there's a, it's a little more involved than just two numbers that's going to tell us the dynamic range. So I think the best thing to do is we want to try to understand this as simply as possible and try to understand just the concept of the dynamic range without getting too in-depth at this point. So let's go to the self-noise or equivalent input first of all and get a little bit better understanding of what they're talking about there. Well, the equivalent input is basically how they're stating it is a method of referring to the signal or noise level at the output of the microphone as if it were an input to the microphone because we're dealing with transducers. So in this application, we'll look at it like that. We're probably going to need just a little bit more explanation about that. So let's take a look at that. All right, so basically what we're talking about here is the equivalent input noise. Now this can be very complex. Um, let's look at how they state it and let's kind of analyze that a little bit. A microphone converts acoustical energy to electrical energy, that transducer, and we've already talked about that concept. Microphones have some level of electrical noise at their output. That means that no matter what you do, there's going to be some electrical noise inside the circuit. Now, to to go to explain that, that there can be noise from nonlinearities. There can be now that's actually distortion when you have nonlinearities in the actual circuitry. But the actual noise they're talking about, electrical noise, white noise is inherent everywhere. Sometimes you can't hear it. If you put a seashell up to your ear, you can hear it. Now, when that's in the electrical system, that sometimes that there are um, things bouncing around, photons and all kinds of things bouncing around inside the, the, the actual environment in there. And when they get excited by electricity, that they become louder. So I know that's, I don't want to get really in depth of that. And that's not a very technical explanation. But with no electricity, there's going to be like white noise there that may be getting amplified in some way. And when there is electricity in there running through the circuit, that that's going to get amplified by excitation of the electricity. Um, so there's going to be some noise there. So this noise may have contributions from random diaphragm movement. So the diaphragm might be moving slightly just from agitation from the environment, thermal noise, um, that could be anything from white noise to anything that might be happening in the atmosphere, or dozens of other sources, which is very vague, but you know, it, it could be anything that's causing some type of noise. Uh, so all those can be thought of as an imaginary acoustic noise source injecting sound into the now soundless microphone. The units on this noise are no longer volts, but units of sound pressure. We've already talked a little bit about the volts and sound pressure. Pascals are dBSPLs, which we've talked about, which can be directly compared to the desired sound pressure inputs. So let's just kind of, let's think about that for a second and take a better look at that. So if you've thought about that for a second, basically what you're understanding is that if you've got some sound you're trying to capture in the room and you turn all the sound off, that there is going to be some noise, that microphone, there's going to be some noise um, that's going to be going through that circuit. No matter how small it might be, there will be some. 
So basically, that is the equivalent input that they're talking about. It's kind of like the noise floor, meaning there is noise there, but no matter how inaudible it is, the more you turn it up, the level, the more you're going to hear it. Does that make sense? And you should have a pretty good understanding of that of watching the videos I did on noise. So let's go back a step. Okay, so with that understanding, whenever we get a, a, a reading that says 15 dB SPL, um, or this other one that says like 32 dB SPL 46 weighted, that means anything underneath that level that we're very likely to start hearing noise. So if we go down below that level, we're going to actually start hearing noise, um, some types of noise whether it's from the microphone or the diaphragm or noise from internally inside the microphone circuitry, things like that, that it might start picking up sound or it might really start picking up white noise from the atmosphere or different types of noise, thermal noises from the atmosphere, like we talked about the seashell when you put it up to your ear, things like that. So that's very easy to understand. Let's look at a couple ways how they state this. Okay, so first of all, how they state this is one way is DBA sound pressure level and another way they state this is dbspl 468 weighted so let's take a look at dba all right the first thing to understand about these is they're trying to get a capture and a representation that's closer to how the ears hears sound so if you've watched those videos i've done on equal loudness contour and you've done a little bit of research on that then you got a pretty good understanding what that's trying to do so what's happening here is what this is trying to do is this like there's a b c and d weighted so if you look at the equal loudness contour the basically you have to boost the lower and the upper end to to hear them equal loudness as something you know in here does that make sense you'd have to boost those frequencies to hear them to where your ear would perceive to hear them at the same level so this weighting is the same concept as for you know it's like in water you know for you know this for this to weigh for this weight here to weigh the same over here in water as it is well that's a bad example so let's go back basically it's adding pressure to it does that make sense adding pressure and weighting the pressure of the spl so that it's actually it looks like it's putting pressure on it down but it actually works backwards to where it's trying to make it form like equal loudness contour by by actually putting pressure on the lower end and the upper end that does that make sense because that way that it's going to register to your ear more like it does right in here and that's a real simple concept to understand one thing to understand is if you look at both of those systems that they in no way shape or form look like the equal loudness contour upside down which would be exact representation of how the ear hears sound because then you'd weight it in those areas to give more sound pressure so that it would sound the pressure would be the same here as it is here you know from you know in the perspective of seeing how your ear would respond to that pressure that it would need more pressure here than here to have the same feeling does that make sense response so it's in no way shape or form neither one of them you know an upside down equal loudness contour of fletcher munson curves so both of them are inaccurate so at best what we have is two systems that are a standard so that we can basically get some understanding that you know that you know and this is really sad but the, the sad truth about that is is that basically whenever we're looking at that lower level is that you know or the higher level or wherever that we better you know take into consideration that this is normally dealing with the lower level and to back off that that means if it says 15 db you know you might want to not come down that far because it might be picking up noise um, from certain frequencies because of the contour and the weighting isn't an exact match to equal loudness contour and it more than likely going to start picking up some of those frequencies so i hope i stated that in a way that was real basic to understand because the weighting works backwards if you look at the equal loudness contour that it looks like you know we've looked at it an equal loudness contour does like this so if i was going to weight this you know like so these levels over here would be the same as this level i'd want to put more pressure on these over here so this would this entire this equal loudness contour would be inversed 
Does that make sense? It would be upside down of what you're seeing here. And it's not in either one of those systems. So just keep in mind that it's not that accurate for the entire frequency realm. So let's go back there for a minute. So now I think we've got a pretty good understanding when we look at a microphone. It says 20 dB A S P L or D B A B C or D. We have an understanding it's trying to use one of those contours to weight the sound. So we hear it that it's picking it up more akin or you know more akin to how the ear actually hears sounds. And same thing with this 32 dB S P L 468 weighted. Um, you know, there's about 11 to 14 dB difference in their, in their levels when you're looking at them. And if you might have to convert one to the other, depending if you're using two systems a lot. And the other thing to keep in mind is the lower the number that the more sensitive it's going to be. So basically, I think we have a pretty good understanding of that and the concepts there, um, up to this point in the series that they're fairly, Fairly easy to understand now, so we know what we're looking at with those numbers. Now, the other end of the spectrum for the dynamic range is the maximum SPL the microphone can accept without distortion. So, normally you're looking at, you know, values of total harmonic distortion. So, when you get something that says 142 dB SPL peak at 0.5% THD, that's total harmonic distortion. That basically means that there's going to be distortion in there, but 5% of the total signal, which is normally inaudible in most, you know, in most applications. So now we have a pretty good understanding of those two. So now when we're talking about the dynamic range, is that we've got both of those numbers to have a good understanding of what the range is. And my, the biggest thing before we go on any more there is that you know, the best thing to do there is to stay off of both of those extremes. That means, you know, come in from both of those sides a little bit just to be safe. Unless you're really trying to catch noise from the noise floor, or if you're really trying to get distortion, just back off both those numbers a little bit and come in on your dynamic range and work from inside of it a little bit so that you don't have to worry about those two extreme levels unless you really want something that's really sensitive. And we'll come right back to how sensitive you want the microphones for the lower levels and the extreme levels is really going to depend on, you know, how much you're going to try to capture. How loud is that sound going to be? At the extreme level, um, I, I don't know that that's going to be as much of an issue as the lower level because it's definitely going to have something to do with the microphone sensitivity and how well it's going to capture the acoustics. You're trying to capture this lady singing this really lilty song, you know, in this cool, you know, chamber that, you know, that you've rented that, you know, you might want a real sensitive microphone that's going to pick up everything, which means you're going to want a number here that's going to be really low without hearing distortion so that you can pick up all the nuances in the room. And, you know, that's about we where we need to be with this. The only other thing we want to address is clipping. You know, it says that it sometimes be like at 1% total harmonic distortion, you know, so <coughs> most of the time, unless you're really trying to use the microphone distortion, once you're seeing this number here and you're getting that, and you so you want to stay below 142, maybe at 130, you know, 38 or something like that, and stay the heck away from any of this. You know, if you're starting to worry so much about 0.5%, or 1% or 0.7%, I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, you're obviously trying to color the sound, and I don't re recommend you doing that at all. I mean, but in some cases, you'll get some people that want to, and so you're going to have to dig into that a little bit to really know how far you can push that microphone and it still sound okay. And same thing with the lower level, but I would think that you would find that most of the time, both of those two extremes, you just want to stay inside of so that you know you're not having issues you know and if you think you need something that's going to be capturing something really loud or really quiet then you better start looking for those numbers that are extremely high or extremely low to get the kind of captures you want so i think we understand that so if we look at some numbers you know just be careful if you're looking at numbers that say like you know the the range is 120 db i mean that doesn't give you much information dude you want both those numbers so you can really evaluate its dynamic range well and from what we've talked about here, you should be able to make a decision about its dynamic range 
You just need to figure out what kind of dynamic range you need for the production you're working on. So let's move on to the next subject.